chef Peter Petro from BCK back with us. And Courtney, why don't you take a little seat? I Okay. We're going to do all the work and serve you. Oh, I love these Peter, segments. Peter, <laughs> welcome back to the show. <laughs> Steak might be something that a lot of people shy away from because uh, whether it's selecting the right cut of meat to cooking it, there are a few things that you say we got to keep in mind. There's there's a lot of... Uh there's a lot of things we got to keep in mind, right? Okay. For me, anyway, um, choosing the right cut of meat, the right quality, the right uh, place where we source it from. It's not just about, uh, for me, it's not just about going over here and grabbing this steak or, or whatever it is. Don't I really... just grab any old steak. Can no, I, I interject, make sure. too? Absolutely. You want to let it, like, we don't want to take it from the refrigerator and put it into a hot grill or a pan, right? Correct. A lot, a lot of times that could uh, make it a little bit tougher than you want it to be. So sometimes we like to uh, let it come up to room temperature. Okay, so leave it on the counter. Yeah, so we don't want to, we don't want to shock it, right, and have right. all those muscle fibers and everything kind of, you know, se seize up on us, right? So we okay. want to, we brought these uh, steaks up to a little bit uh, closer to room temperature, so it's not such a drastic temperature change. So okay. that's a help. while I'm sitting here, what, what is this, Peter? This is an old fashioned. Okay, may yeah. I? You may absolutely. There's one there too, Derek. Okay, so. well, uh, well, I'll just go for it then. It is okay. Friday. So cheers. after well. you've selected, cheers, Keep talking Courtney. So I can listen. Yeah. You selected a great, uh, high quality cut of meat. Yep. You've brought it to room temperature. Mm -hmm. How do we prepare the pan? So this is obviously the pan's preheated. We want to get it a little hot, so we put a little sear on it. Okay. Uh, on our steaks. So the the steaks, I like to make sure it's seasoned mm. really, really well. So they were seasoned a little bit before. Is that just salt? And then that is just a little uh, kosher salt, right? Kosher Very, salt. Uh, and it's only ingredient is salt, so there's no other, you know, uh, some other place but iodine or anything like that. We don't have that. It's just plain salt. Kosher very, salt, and that's a nice very, light very, dusting there. Very, very clean. I'll put a little bit of olive oil for some fat, which is going to help facilitate the, uh, what we call the Maillard reaction or the browning okay. uh, of the steak, which is great uh, because we want that we definitely want that sear on there. And tell me again, how hot is that pan? This is probably somewhere, I'm gonna guess, we're well up into the 400, 500 degree range. So you're gonna, you wanna crank that up to a high heat yeah. then? Yep, as high uh, as you could possibly get it without having the fire department come visit you. <laughs> right. And it's good to so. invest into like one of those uh, cast irons, right? Cast iron, right, has definitely heavy duty. Yeah. Uh, they they do have some hot and cold spots here and there, but generally they're, they're known for, you know, uh, being that thicker base has a, a much more even, uh, heating surface. And do you clean your cast iron with soap and water? Because I know a lot of people will condition the pan and just sort of wipe out the oils. That's all you really That's all you, really that's need. All you okay. do. That's just all you need to do. So because don't wash have, it. Right. You don't have to wash it. You just wipe it back out. And, you know, and uh, growing up, my grandmother used to keep hers in the oven, like, at all times, you know, and just we needed, we knew where it was whenever we needed it and just come right back out and get right in it. Oh, well, there so, you go. Awesome. All right. Perfect. So that's been going for about a minute now on that yep. first side. So we get that nice sear and then we'll give it a quick, we'll give it a quick uh, flip and then we kind of see where we're at we are definitely uh, getting the brown now one thing a, a lot of chefs are taught uh, you know at a very young age is to put your steak in the pan let it sit don't touch it it's actually quite the opposite we want to actually flip this thing quite often oh. through the cooking process it, it, especially if you're hungry and you want to eat faster um, it's going to help facilitate that cooking process get it done faster really? a little heat comes up right flip it over and do it again and again and so again. continue flipping about continue how many flipping. times rule of thumb, um, rule of thumb and honestly just until it's ready so what what I'm doing a lot of I, I use tongs and not a, a spatula uh, because I want to feel the, the the meat I want to feel if it's uh, what the temperature is of it right we we're taught um, you know we use our hand as a guide for telling the doneness of our steak and we push this meaty section of our of our hand right here and so with your open hand like this this is usually rare okay and then you put your thumb to your index finger and that's a medium rare and you go to your middle finger that's medium medium well and then well done so this is how young chefs are taught to actually do it. So when you feel your steak, it should feel about one of these. So you're at about the right temperature I every single that time shit. that you do it. And with the tongs, you're saying you have a more tactile right. experience. Right, and then there. I don't always like to be, you know, poking at a steak, especially, you know, in the restaurants. We don't want to be, you know, touching people's food necessarily all the time. So it's, you know, I can I can pretty much tell the, the doneness of the steak by using, by using the tongs. tongs. Yep. And very quickly, uh, we're running short on time. You serve it up with the asparagus and... And some, oh wow, those are the cheesy potatoes right there. Cheesy potatoes right there. Courtney's got some in front of her, so I uh, left them with her. Uh, 
without bacon because it is, you know. It is Lent. Uh, it is Lent, even though we're cooking steaks. But this is for tomorrow, right? For some people that just practice that on up. Fridays only. That's how I. <laughs> that's how I kind of do it. So, but this is great. And then we have some asparagus, which I've I've blanched the shock. We're just going to add this to our pan uh, right towards the end to get that little heat. And then if we want to add a little bit more flavor to some of our stuff, we have some aromatic, some rosemary, rosemary, and, and a little thyme. And let's get the studio smelling real nice for you guys. It smells nice. fantastic. Yeah. And you know, BCK, you guys are so good at what you do. Thank yeah. you, Peter, for stopping by and Thank sharing you. your tips with us. Appreciate it. Yeah, I know you're All cooking, right. so I'll give you a yeah. fist bump there. And I as gotcha. always, if you would like to connect with Peter or with any of our guests, you can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv, and look for the scene on Houston Life tab. Perfect. Thanks again. Cheers. Thank you so much. Cheers. Appreciate it, guys.